Semiconductors emerged as a critical part of national security. Countries around the world are sparing no expenses in expanding their chip industry. Am Jung zooms in on the developments. With the latest global economic downturn looming, worldwide chip sales have fallen for the first time since early 2020. Data from the Washington-based Semiconductor Industry Association shows global sales in September stood at 47 billion U.S. dollars, shrinking 3 percent on year. Market research firm also said sales are projected to fall by 5 percent in 2023 compared to this year. But one expert says demand for semiconductors will likely rise from the fourth quarter of next year with the growing electric car and metaverse industries, but also due to a new product from Intel. Intel is planning to launch upgraded CPUs for data centers early next year. For them to operate, upgraded DRAMs are needed. When DRAM sales increase, NAND flash memory chip sales also tend to rise. So this is expected to lead to increased sales in semiconductors next year. Regardless of economic booms and busts, global tech giants have been throwing their hats in the ring to become one of the heavy weights of the incredibly complex and costly chip-making business. And now it's also becoming a fight between governments around the world. In order to boost competitiveness and national security, in August this year, the U.S. signed the Chips and Science Act into law. More than 52 billion U.S. dollars in grants and incentives will be provided for the American semiconductor industry. Taiwan last month also unveiled larger tax breaks of up to 25 percent for R&D in chips. However, South Korea's CHIPS Act, which aims to expand tax breaks for companies investing in semiconductors and nurturing more skilled workers, has been drifting in the National Assembly. When companies invest in semiconductors, the tax breaks that firms get only go up to about 10 percent. A special tax act that aims to raise this to 20 percent is waiting to be passed at the National Assembly, but opposing parties are not able to agree on it. Another expert says Seoul should continue its balancing act between Washington and Beijing. Due to America's containment policy, China is not able to develop any significant type of semiconductors as the U.S. is the source of most of the chips technology. South Korea relies heavily on the U.S. for chips technology, but we cannot let go of China because the market is too big. So Seoul should balance its position by expanding cooperation in other fields like politics or culture. Om Ji-young, Arirang News.